Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. So which is more important, the Dow up in positive territory today or the number of czars up in record territory today? Happy about the Dow, worried about this. Now the president is up to 16 czars, including a new pay czar, expected to be appointed as early as next week. Even more scary to some is the amount of dough these guys are overseeing. Try more than $1.7 trillion. $1.7 trillion, a lot of dough run by a lot of czars. We've got a stimulus czar, he's overseeing $787 billion. A health czar, nearly $759 billion. An intelligence czar, $47.5 billion. An urban affairs czar, $43.7 billion. A car czar, $41.5 billion, not counting bailouts yet to be paid. A cyber czar, who hasn't even been appointed yet, tried $30 billion smackers there. $17 billion for a border czar. More than $15 billion for a drug czar. And then there is the Great Lakes czar. You heard me right, a Great Lakes czar. Now, this dude will be overseeing up to $5 billion, money to protect fish like bass, trout, pike, and I kid you not, suckerfish. A lot of them in those waters, apparently. Turns out a lot more of them on land. Because here's the thing about these czar guys. They really don't answer to us guys. And outside of the president, actually, no, guys. They don't have to answer to Congress. They don't have to disclose how much they're being paid. They don't even have to justify how much money they're spending or even how they're spending it. The only guy, like I said, they have to talk to is the guy who picked them, the president. He is the only guy with whom they must share these subjects. We're just the guys who are pretty much their clueless subjects. The Cato Institute's Dan Mitchell says he is not shocked the president's pushing all of these czars. He is shocked no one is putting up a stink that he is. It's a lot of czars, Dan. It, it sure is. And, and what worries me is that in some sense, we're jumping past French-style socialism to Argentinian-style crony capitalism, where it's the president's buddies who make decisions on who gets what resources in the economy. Now, not only is that a potential rat's nest for corruption, but it also involves government, sort of the old Soviet-style commissars. It involves government officials deciding which sectors of the economy are getting capital? Which sectors of the economy are being persecuted by the political class? And you know, I, I realize that sometimes I'm a little prone to, to getting hysterical about these things, <laughs> but I worry a lot about what this means in the future because we've seen so many countries around the world that have tried this type of policy and it never, ever works. Well, you know, Dan, even allowing for the fact that there is going to be more government, and, that, and that's clearly the case here, and even giving the president the benefit of the doubt that a lot of the people he's picking for these positions are capable of they're trying to do the best thing a lot of them come on board for these type of jobs at enormous personal expense the fact of the matter is it is another layer of government accountable to no one but the white house they don't have to answer to congress presumably now and then they might go to testify but very little else and i i just worry what is done in secret often is messed up in secret well, here's the key thing. I bet some of the commissars in the Soviet Union were genuinely well-intentioned people. I bet some of the industrial policy planners in Japan were very well-intentioned people. Some of the command and control socialist planners in Western Europe 20 years ago were well-intentioned people. It doesn't matter what your intentions are. It doesn't matter what sacrifices you've made. Once you replace markets, with political discretion in terms of how resources are allocated, you are on a path. Well, then, to Dan, would ruin. you be worried, worried any less if that path were simply run through Congress? Because one way or the other, there's going to be more government oversight. Does it matter to you whether it's through an elected Congress or an appointed uh, czar? Well, clearly, once you get big government in an area of the economy, that's bad news regardless. What worries me about these czars, though, is. It is, as you say, unaccountable. You do have one individual with enormous power. The potential for favoritism and crony capitalism is just enormous, and we've certainly seen that right. with just the actions of Paulson and Geithner with the financial bailouts. Do we really want to spread that virus? throughout our economy. And we should point out, Dan, and any regular viewer of this show would know we were very much against the original ballots and rescues in the last administration, which, if my memory serves me right, was Republican, mm -hmm. because of where this sort of thing, even though it has lots of good intentions, where it goes and where it leads. Having said that, though, 
Uh, the czar thing notwithstanding, which if memory serves me right, didn't turn out too well for the last czar, but I'll just leave that out. Uh, the, 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 you can't make a lot of this stuff up. We have a Great Lakes czar. And I'm thinking, I got to find out what that dude's going to do. Because uh, I guess everyone wants to keep the lakes clean, keep them but, but one of the more prominent fish in the Great Lakes is the sucker fish. And, and, and I'm just wondering, man, oh man, that's a sucker fish. And, and, and we're giving him a lot of money. That's all I, I see. Well, the good news is that some of these czars are just PR stunts. I doubt the urban affairs czar really has that much power. What concerns well, me you know, a lot Dan more Darrow, are the I'll czars that have real disagree. power. I'll respectfully disagree, and you are as smart as a whip, but what I worry about, whether he has power or not, or she has power or not, they are then at odds with the very cabinet secretaries with whom they're supposed to share info, right? And, and I just worry that the overlap breeds uh, turf warfare that, that, that makes whatever happened with starting Homeland Security look like a walk in the park. Oh, well, let's not forget, though, turf wars, bureaucratic overlap, mindless duplication. Those are Olympic sports here in Washington. Why waste money on one bureaucracy when you can have five bureaucracies wasting money on the same thing? It, 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 that bothers me, but not nearly as much as the potential damage any one of those bureaucracies can do if they have real power to interfere in private sector economic decisions. All right. We'll see what happens, Dan. Mitchell, thank you very much for the Cato Institute.